Hackers may have stolen the social security numbers of every single American. Here with what you need to know, cybersecurity expert Nicholas Behar. Good morning, Nicholas. Always good to see you. What exactly happened? Who took what? Sure. So uh, we recently found out about this because there was a lawsuit filed alleging that a company called National Public Data hadn't notified uh, affected individuals in a timely manner. So we saw Contrary to what's been said in the media, they're saying that there's been over 2 billion uh, people that have been affected, but it's just 2 billion records uh, instead of two, over 2 billion people. So that's So two, how do you differentiate that? It's just that one person could have 10, Multiple records, different. right, exactly. Okay. So you could have multiple records on yourself. Uh, but there's only 272 million social security numbers and a little over 170 million emails on okay. there. So if you were born before 2002, uh, there's a good chance that you're not affected. So for, yeah, so, so it's technically it doesn't affect not, us. Then. Not every American, it's just? It's just the people who are old enough. Yeah, okay. so anybody born after 2002 See, that's why uh, we have is gonna be here. affected. Yeah, I'm not that, not that young, not that young. So, so here's, here, here's the obvious question. We've been talking about hackers and uh, your passwords and all this and that, and nobody can keep track of the passwords. Everything's a password now. What happened? And why does this keep happening? It seems like the hackers all over the world, wherever they might be, are always one or two steps ahead of every system and every cybersecurity tool at our disposal. So now that we live in a world that's so technology centric, sure. a lot of the actions that we take and things we do in our daily lives are dependent on technology companies that have data. So the company that was breached is called National Public Data and they're a company that provides information to private investigators and mm -hmm. people who want to do background checks. And so a hacking group by the name of US DOD, not related to the Department of Defense, yeah. a clever uh, name that they got for back in there. April was able to access uh, the data brokers systems and get data out in an unencrypted fashion. They then uh, posted it on a criminal dark web forum for sale. So they were asking, uh, I think just for a few million dollars uh, for that data. And then more recently, somebody released it for free. So now anybody can have access to it. if They know where to find it. Okay, having access to the information, oh, I've man. seen over the past few weeks and months, even I'm getting notices that your information, yep. you know, could have been compromised. And I'm wondering, well, what is somebody going to do with my social security number or my email, anyhow? Like, what what could they do with this information? <laughs> so they could actually go out and open financial accounts on but your don't, behalf. But don't you have to have an ID to do that? Like, you have a Not number. Not necessarily, actually. Really? So you can go online and do a lot of that stuff without an ID. So how do you think we're able to open bank accounts online, apply for credit cards oh, wow. online, etc.? But cetera. you still have to show some type of proof of identification to, like, be able to... So when you go into the branch, a lot of the times you have to be able to show a piece of identification, but when you're doing things online, they'll ask you for more pieces of information in order to verify you are who you say you are, and a lot sure. of that information is already out there. So somebody could go, for example. And get your address. And get your, yeah, so get your address, get your phone number, phone number social security, Goodness. and then open up a bank account or a credit card on your behalf, buy goods with that fraudulent credit card, and then send them back to you know wherever they're operating from and sell them for a profit. Yeah. Charlie was saying that she's gotten emails and this message is saying your thing's been compromised but then we're so paranoid now that that could be a, a, a scam mm -hmm. and they're trying to get us too. So it's like what, what do we do here? Uh, how do we know legitimately if our information was compromised and more importantly what do we do afterwards? So luckily, most of the large banks now include credit yeah. monitoring services within their app. So if you open your bank app, there's a good chance that you can uh, monitor your credit and also monitor to see yeah. if your information has been yeah. exposed within the app. If your information has been exposed, it's a really good idea to freeze your credit. Now there's a difference between a credit lock and a credit freeze. So you want to make sure you're doing a credit freeze because right. that's actually going to prevent people from pulling your information, whereas a credit lock will just prevent people from opening new accounts, but they can still pull your information. So it's good. really important to do the credit freeze so like that folks are not able to open any accounts uh, on your behalf and then go ahead and buy things and oh sell them somewhere else for a profit. So it's getting uh, you know more and more dangerous out there, but it right. just means we have to become more and more vigilant. Yeah. You talk about being vigilant, but I feel like there people will say that there should be a sense of responsibility. You're giving your information to these companies. Can they be held accountable if, if this stuff happens? 
So we're starting to see the landscape shift more in that direction. We're starting to see the government start to release rules and regulations that certain industries or certain organizations have to comply by. Right. So now if you're a publicly traded entity, the SEC has released rules uh, that you must follow if you're publicly traded. Also, the state of California was one of the first uh, to release a privacy regulation that dictates how organizations have to handle individual mm. California residents' wow. information. So that's becoming more and more prevalent, and now there's talks of doing that on the federal level. I wanted to ask you, how, how, how does one protect oneself moving forward? But it's just a matter of you really just got to stay on top of your stuff and look at your things and actually look at your credit scores and, and check. How often a year do you think? Because Experian and all this stuff, like nobody's looking at that. I mean, uh, so, <laughs> like I mentioned lie. previously, every time you log into your bank application, you can use that to monitor and yeah. see whether or not somebody's yeah, opened a new account, the and they're actually notifying you automatically mm. now. Wow. So, if somebody opens a new account and you opted it into that, they'll send you an email and they'll say, hey, it looks like you've opened a new credit card at Capital One these, or wherever. These new bad guys are, are very talented people. I wish they would use their powers for good, not evil. So, you, uh, you give them a lot of credit, right, because a lot of the times, uh, this is a result of negligence on behalf of the company that's mm -hmm. storing the data. So really? in this particular case, when they got the data out, it was actually unencrypted, oh. right? So it was not that's properly, what I have to say. right? So it was not it properly glyphs. secured. So Listen, I thought Dark Web was a, the Spider-Man sequel for the movie, or, but I guess not. Yeah. So it's not always, you know, they're yeah. not always super skilled. It's right. sometimes it's negligence on behalf of the firms that are holding the data that are not following oh, best boy. practices, which is. More common than we might think, unfortunately. I mean, you know. My Always wife good told to be me, with you. My wife told me. <laughs> my wife told me, don't put all your passwords on your phone, and then I won't remember. Nicholas, thank, uh, you. thank you very much. Really fascinating stuff. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, you got it.